Hello lovely people of the internet and welcome back to another Veggie Tips and Tricks video. Today is the first in a series that I have been wanting to do for ages. It's a series where I prepare recipes from the 1940s, 50s and 60s. I'm calling it a mid-century menu and today we're going to be doing hors d'oeuvres and a cocktail. I scrolled Pinterest for these recipes. I got them all from the same website, which I will link down below. This person has a blog full of vintage recipes and vintage cookbooks. So if you're wanting to make any of these or investigate what other ones there are, check it in the description below. I'm going to be making a classic daiquiri today. I found an original recipe, which isn't quite how I have seen it made these days so that will be fun and I have a bunch of hors d'oeuvres some of which I thought looked really gross and some of which I thought looked really yummy so I'm quite excited to share them with you today and to taste them at the end of the video. But before we get started, today's video is in paid partnership with BetterHelp. Maybe you are struggling with anxiety or depression or wanting to learn better communication skills, uh, develop some tactics for dealing with something that you are struggling with in your everyday life. I would highly recommend trying therapy. I have tried therapy previously in my life, face-to-face -face therapy, but I have been trying out the BetterHelp app for the last few weeks and I'm loving the fact that it is all available on my phone. I can really, really easily book an appointment with my therapist. I can message my therapist when I want, or I can do a Zoom call or a telephone call. And BetterHelp's aim is to make therapy more accessible. As you know, I am a digital nomad. I am continually changing countries. So having access to my therapist, no matter where I am in the world is really, really helpful to me. This sign up process is super easy. You literally just do a quick questionnaire and they match you up with a licensed therapist. I'm very pleased with the first person that they matched me with, but if you're not happy with your first match, it is very easy to change. So if you've been thinking about trying out a therapist, I would highly recommend BetterHelp. And I do have a little deal for you guys. They are offering 10% off the first month of your online therapy. Therapy. You can go to the link in the description down below that is betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash Miss B to start your online therapy sessions today. Thank you to BetterHelp for supporting this channel and my mental health journey. Let's get back to these recipes. Okay, so the first recipe I'm going to try is something that kept popping up in a lot of these books and more than once in this particular book that I used. And that is the combination of peanut butter and ketchup or tomato sauce that you would usually have with a barbecue. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this sounds disgusting to me, but it kept popping up and I thought, you know, maybe there is something here. I'm not gonna judge something before I try it. So we're gonna try the peanut butter and ketchup dip with corn chips. I didn't really want an entire cup of this dip, so I just ended up putting equal parts peanut butter and tomato ketchup. And as my peanut butter was all natural, I did add a little bit of salt. Then I simply served it with plain corn chips. The book did suggest potato chips, but I figured it was terrifying enough. Next up is a very simple little hors d'oeuvre. It is cubed avocado covered in Parmesan cheese. I'm not gonna lie, I chose this one because the price of this menu was mounting up and I already had these ingredients at home. So there we go. <laughs> this is pretty self-explanatory. I just juiced half a lemon and added it to a bowl ready to toss some avocado cubes through. This is how I always cube my avocados. I could probably do it in a neater way to make them more even, but hey ho, this is what I did. I did sprinkle in some salt into the Parmesan cheese before dipping the cubes in. And I didn't put a toothpick into every single one because that seemed incredibly wasteful. Something that I personally really love about 1950s finger food is how creative they got with it sometimes. I know not all of it was super pretty, but 
they were trying so hard. Little Tichy sandwiches, I think, is such a classic finger food that I couldn't leave this pinwheel sandwich recipe off of today's menu. So let's give it a go. I did in fact fail to film it, but there are crushed pecans in that bowl that I added the orange zest to and this what is technically vegan creme fraiche, but worked perfectly as a cream cheese spread and was very tasty. And I got to tell you, the combination of the pineapple and the orange zest and the nuts with the cream cheese was pretty darn good. Here I am cutting the crust off my bread like I'm in primary school. It's supposed to be a full loaf, but I could only find sliced loaves, so we're having mini versions that I then squished flat with a rolling pin, spread with margarine, and popped the cream cheese mixture on. Now the recipe did say to add olives or gherkins to the center of the roll. I'm not confident about how this is going to taste, but I reserve my judgment until the end. Then it's simply a matter of rolling the pinwheels up as tightly as you can and wrapping them in some cling film or plastic wrap and popping them in the fridge to chill. And last but not least is a recipe that my lovely patrons, before I close my Patreon down, sorry guys, they did vote on this one for this series. So here it is guys, I did include it just for you and it is the chili meatballs with a spicy dipping sauce. This one's really interesting because I wouldn't say it seems particularly spicy and the dipping sauce is largely olives, but we're gonna give it a go. <laughs> I did not in fact have green olives with pimento inside so my pimento is on the side and I used a dried chili instead of a fresh one because I couldn't find any fresh ones at the supermarket. I also used a neutral sunflower oil instead of peanut oil and simply processed everything in my processor because that was easier than mincing everything individually. Then I popped it all on the stove, brought it to a boil and set it aside. For my meatballs, I am using Beyond Meat or Beyond Hack as it's called here in France because it is now illegal to call things by anything resembling the animal product. I'm eyeballing this. I mean, that's approximately half a cup of breadcrumbs, but I honestly don't know. I just sort of throw everything in and hope for the best. I simply rolled them all up into little meatballs and popped them in the oven for what ended up being about 20 minutes as I would not be cooking them at the table as per the recipe. Okay, it is time to make our daiquiri. This is such a simple recipe. I have rum in the cupboard. I have always got limes in the fridge and then it's just ice and sugar. So let's see if a very classic daiquiri is as tasty as the ones that I get at the bar that I always find a bit too sugary and kind of lollipoppy anyway. I do have to say I do tend to like classic cocktail recipes more than the modernized versions so fingers crossed that it's the same for the daiquiri. This is pretty straightforward I'm just going to be using my blender I'm putting whole ice cubes in lemon juice and rum and blitzing that baby until it is like a frozen drink. It's kind of a kid adult drink and I'm here for it. So that is all our recipes and drinks prepped. I'm going to put on something more glamorous for a cocktail party and I will see you for the tasting. That is a large daiquiri and I'm not mad about it. Oh my God, that is delicious. It's very alcoholic. 
and I actually put less than what the recipe suggested, so Betty Draper eat your heart out. I'm gonna start with something that we know is gonna be good. Avocado. I mean, it's very simple. It tastes exactly like what it sounds like it would taste like. Avocado with lemon and Parmesan cheese. Try one of these little pinwheels. That is surprisingly good. Of course, it was supposed to be bigger. I was supposed to cut the bread lengthwise, but I couldn't find any bread that had been cut. So they're miniature ones. They would be very cute if they were giant pinwheels. But I was worried that the combination of olive with the orange and the pineapple would be weird, but it's actually really yummy. I would recommend them. I know the meatballs are gonna be good. It would be weird if they weren't. So I'm gonna try the peanut butter and ketchup dip. Hmm. Okay. It's not horrible. It has like a savory sweet, like salty sweet thing going on. Um, I think you could definitely make better dips. <laughs> so it's an interesting choice, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Well, let's finish off with what I think is going to be very tasty. A meatball with what is kind of a weird sauce, but let's see how they go together. This dipping sauce is not easy to dip into. What I would say is like the olives and the oil have separated from each other. I am not a fan of that dipping sauce. I would say that's a no from me. You'd be better off just omitting the oil, blending those ingredients together and serving it as a tepanade. It would be much nicer and the oil wouldn't all separate from the olives. And it's just weird as a dipping sauce for the meatballs. I would just go for a straight up chili sauce. Anyway, cheers. It is late and I haven't actually prepared any dinner, so this is going to be my dinner. <laughs> so that is today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Are you gonna try any of these recipes or have you been trying vintage recipes at home already? I would love to hear down in the comments. Thank you once again to BetterHelp for the paid partnership on today's video. Don't forget to check out the link if you would like some therapy down below in the description. As always, guys, you can like, comment, and subscribe to support my channel. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I'm regretting my choice to eat peanut butter, cream cheese, and extremely oily olive dip for dinner. No regrets on the daiquiri though.